Daenerys Targaryen. She says she is the mother of dragons. But would you trust her with your kids? Her father was a maniac. She palled around with Dothraki terrorists. She asked the city of Karth for a government bailout. Then she lost three baby dragons after placing them in an unlocked wooden box. An unlocked wooden box. This Khaleesi wants to be queen of the Seven Kingdoms, but can she be trusted? Daenerys Targaryen. Wrong for dragons. Wrong for the realm. Paid for by the committee to protect dragons. We don't know anything about him. He was never really vetted. Is he really the true-born son of Robert Baratheon? All over the Seven Kingdoms, people are asking the same question. Who is the real King Joffrey? The people of Westeros are hurting. Winter is coming. Crop yields are falling. And the price of fuel is going up. The cost of peat moss is through the thatched roof. And this young and inexperienced king takes advice from a whoremongering imp and has launched an illegal war in the north. What is King Joffrey hiding? This is not our kind of family values. King Joffrey. What a bastard. What a bastard. Paid for by the Inbaratheans for freedom. Rob Stark. He's the biggest celebrity in the North. But his father was a traitor. He arrested his own mother. His bastard brother deserted the Night's Watch. And he couldn't defend his own castle. Worst of all, Rob Stark hasn't stopped the wildlings from invading our lands and taking our jobs. He even has an illegal alien for a nanny. And now he wants to be king in the North? King? Some people say he's really a wolf. Some people say he eats dead people. We can't wait until it's too late. Send a raven to Winterfell now and tell Rob Stark to go back home. Stop eating dead people and defend the damn wall. This ad paid for by Crossbows GPS. You shouldn't have to pay to talk to the people closest to you, or the people who used to be. That's why Umbrella Wireless is proud to announce the new friends, family, and recent ex-girlfriend plan. Now you'll get unlimited calls to your best buddy, your mom, or Cindy, once she realizes that you're seriously meant for each other and should stop screening your calls. Now the 30 minutes of agonizing silence where you're both afraid to hang up may drain your battery, but it won't drain your wallet. And you'll get unlimited calls just to check if she still cares enough to pick up with no extra charges. With a friend's family and recent ex-girlfriend plan, your phone will automatically answer calls from your ex because maybe she finally realizes that you're the only one for her and wants to get coffee sometime. Now, after lonely nights of looking at pictures of the road trip you took together when everything was great, your misspelled texts are absolutely free. The only thing you have to pay for is the booze. The friend's family and recent ex-girlfriend plan. Because she wants you back, she just doesn't know it yet. When you can't find anything to watch on cable, you get bored. When you get bored, you listen to radio cooking shows. When you listen to radio cooking shows, you invite a friend over for dinner. When you invite a friend over for dinner, you use twice as many beans. When you use twice as many beans, you expel deadly farts that kill your friend's dog. When you kill your friend's dog, your friend becomes unstable. When your friend becomes unstable, you're sued for everything you're worth. When you're sued for everything you're worth, you're thrown to the streets. When you're thrown to the streets, you devote your life to world domination. When you devote your life to world domination, you become an evil fascist overlord. When you become an evil fascist overlord, old friends plot their revenge. When old friends plot their revenge, you are shot in the back of the head. And when you're shot in the back of the head, you miss your jazzercise appointment. Don't miss your jazzercise appointment. Upgrade to Indirect TV. Go online or call 1 800 Direct TV. Mm -hmm. 
millions of Americans every day are shedding unwanted pounds by taking tested and proven ultra lipo stick. Carbohydrates are bad, bad. Our carbo fighting antioxidant is good, good. Just listen to these satisfied customers. My name is Gail, and I lost like 20 pounds on ultra lipo stick. My name is Jared, and I lost 46 pounds using ultra lipo stick. My name is Zach, and I actually gained weight. This stuff sucks. Ultra lipo stick is safe and easy to inject. Just three doses, four times a day, discreetly underneath your fingernail. Listen to this. I used ultra lipo stick and suffered from side effects like uncontrollable greasy discharge. Ultra lipo stick, it turned the armpits of all of my shirts orange. This stuff is crap. Try it today and see some real results. Ultra lipo stick, not available in stores. Results may vary. Zinc Media. Feel the power of knowledge. around the world. It is I, your lovable host, El Rod, coming to you live from my bunkerized home studio somewhere within the great granite state of New Hampshire, where the state motto is still live free or die. It is not big government or bust. And yes, I did check again today and it is still live free or die. It is hump day, Wednesday, Wednesday, May the 6th in the year of our Lord, 2015. And oh, the, uh, the the number that you can call this evening, if you wish to join me live or express whatever's on your mind, is six zero three toll free. By the way, uh, six zero three eight three five three two two four. That's six zero three eight three five three two two four. And of course, I will uh, hopefully see you and uh, put you in the queue and put you on the air with yours truly, me. Um, because there's only one me, one and only. Now, live free or die in this state. Look, there is, um, I mean, I, there is a lot I have to go over today, and, and I know I'm not going to get to it all. And um, it's simply because there's just so much stuff out there to talk about that, that we need to discuss, that we need to talk about, that you need to know about. Now, one of the things is, look, I'm going to tell you guys right now. I know that there there might be some listeners out there who are not, uh, all about the First or Second Amendment. I'm going to tell you right now that without the First Amendment, there would be no need for the Second Amendment because amendment, you wouldn't know what's going on. But here's the deal. I think you all need to, you need to fully practice and utilize your Second Amendment rights. I think now is a time that you arm up. Now, I, I'm, I'm calling for citizens to arm themselves to the T. And I, I, I don't want this to be like it's alarm, like I'm an alarmist. But you have to understand something. That this world is shrinking. It is becoming smaller by the day. We have an administration in our government that refuses to protect our borders. Look, the the terror attack that the administration just doesn't want to call attack, they want to call it an attempt. It was an actual attack, just thankfully, nobody, no innocents were killed. 
Plain and simple, they, they, it wasn't attempted. Uh, they didn't stop it before they start, began their attack. The, only, the, the thing is, is that they attacked and nobody died except for them. Thank goodness. But you've got to be in a position to be able to protect yourself and your loved ones. Because our government is not protecting us. Oh, sure, you know, uh, on some occasions, they, they, they may overprotect us a little bit. But look, our, 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 this administration views many of us as the enemy of this country and not the true enemy. You need to, look, you need to have Burt's Basement from the movie Tremors. Every single law-abiding citizen needs to have Burt's Basement. I'm t- that is my goal. I'm telling you right now, Burt's Basement is where it's at. You need to be able to carry on you at all times. So whatever stupid law that your, your state may have on, on carry permits, get it. I don't care if it's open or if it's concealed, get it. You need to be able to protect, because there's going to be way too many idiots out there that are going to think, <coughs> excuse me, that somebody else is going to rise up and protect them. Well, it, you need to be their hero. Because the police cannot be everywhere at every time. They're not going to know ahead of time, uh, such as the case, I do believe they, they knew a little bit ahead of time of, of the attack in, in Texas. They're not always going to know this. And now, this is why I'm saying this, folks, because it has been reported that ISIS claims that they have terror cells in 15 states. Now, we already know that radical Islamists, including ISIS, uh, have had training camps in Mexico. One as close as eight miles from our border, our southern border. Now, our border is pretty much still wide open. We have been talking about this for years, about the need to close the border, not not necessarily because of the flood of illegals coming in from Mexico and other places in Central and South America through Mexico. I mean, yes, that's a problem, but that wasn't our main concern. Our main concern after 9-11 in 2001 was that our borders were too open and that people who meant to do us harm would cross over, not just those who, <clears throat> who are looking for a better life. And indeed, now that we know that there's a camp, a training camp there, and then ISIS says, well, yeah, you know, we've got, we've got 71 operatives ready to attack in 15 states. This is why you need to be prepared. Because this administration, in an effort to try to seize control of the government forever, and by allowing illegals and then giving them amnesty, they have left our borders open and us vulnerable to attack. It's only a matter of time before these nut jobs from the Middle East dis- uh, finally succeed in some sort of attack. I'm just, look, it's just. It's just a logical progression. It's just a logical thought process. You need to have Burt's basement. And if at least one person on every city, in every city neighborhood, in every neighborhood across this, if just one person had Burt's basement in every neighborhood, you know how much safer Americans would be? In reality, how much safer they would be not feel, but actually be. A lot safer than we are now. Now, I'm not saying that you need to hoard all kinds of stuff, you know, and hunk and be able to hunker down like these, like some of these crazy preppers out there. Although, you know, having an emergency stash or emergency supply is not a bad thing. It's not a, it's, it, it's a logical thing. And now, now, I'm not saying to have a stash uh, of weapons and ammunition and food that'll last you for 10 years. I mean, that, that's a little crazy. But to be able to handle just about any sort of situation uh, short of, you know, uh, military armament, 
Oh, Burt's Basement is just is not overkill. You know, having a variety of guns for a variety of, of reasons and, and a variety of, you know, because each gun has its own types of, uh, type of uh, 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 usefulness in the way it's used. I mean, you use a shotgun for one thing, you use a rifle for one thing, you use, you know, a certain type of handgun for another thing and you use a certain other type of handgun for another thing. So it's, it's okay to have Burt's Basement. You got all your... your, your uh, your basis is, this is, this is, this is covered, including every ISIS basis. But yes, the ISIS is reporting a grim online warning from a self-described American jihadist said Sunday's terror attack in Texas was a work of ISIS and that the terrorist group has scores of trained soldiers positioned in 15 states awaiting orders to carry out more uh, operations. There, You know, there is a... Um, Again, art imitating life. There's a there's a, a, a TV series. Now, I, I've never seen it, but I've caught the previews of it, the commercials for it, and it's about a, a sleeper cells of 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 Russians, communists, I guess, uh, here in the United States, and they be, they get you know they're, they're living as Americans, it, it immigrated, uh, you know, and they become naturalized that type. They they. They're supposed to be naturalized Americans. They have a kid, that, that, but the kid turns out not to be theirs, I don't think. I'm not sure. Uh, but they, they get activated to be spies. They're sleeper spies. So look, if we know this type of thing happens you know, with, with the Russians and the Chinese, why is it so hard to believe or understand that radical Islamists can do the same thing. Now, understand, we've got, you know, what, what was it, the, the last total, uh, some three, five million uh, Muslims in this country now? I don't know, was, I heard some, let's say, somebody say nine million. So we're approaching 10 million any, any, way, any way it goes. Do you, do you think that some of them, not to mention they are converting some Americans into uh, over to Islam, uh, so do you th- do you possibly see how it is possible that we could have sleeper agents here in the United States for ISIS and Al Qaeda and other radical Islamic terrorist groups? Absolutely, they're here. And now I don't want to alarm anyone, but understand they have to live somewhere. So if you're in one of these 15 states, maybe one of these sleeper agents is living in your apartment building or on your street. Maybe he's your neighbor. Maybe he, maybe he is one of your coworkers. Now, I don't want anybody, everybody to go to work tomorrow and, and be suspicious of every Muslim. Because understand, Muslims are not just Arabic. I know people are going to look at somebody who, who's of you know, Iraqi or Afghani or, or Iranian descent or something like that. And look, folks, you would be stupid to think that, that is the, those are the only radical Islamists. You would be really, really stupid. Because Islamists come in, I mean, look, um, you know, they come in many forms. Indonesia is an is a Islamic nation, but they're Asian. I mean, th- th- there's a growing number of Indians from India, you know, uh, turning into Muslims, Islam. There are a number of white Americans who, who have converted to Islam. So c- come on, tell me, wh- wh- which by looking at them, unless they're fully, fully dressed in Islamic garb, which a lot of times they are not, because under the Quran, it is perfectly legitimate under the Quran and, 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 and legalized by Allah, to go ahead and lie to your neighbor and and try to fool them and hide from them and do everything possible to trick them in order to achieve Allah's goal. So they're allowed to lie to you. They're you know unlike you know Christians and Jews you know who say you should not lie. Uh, they're 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 encouraged to do so. Just so they can achieve their goal. And, and so you're not going to be able just to look at somebody and determine, well, okay, this, you know, this, this guy, he's a, 
he's a Islamist radical jerko. You're not going to be able to know. You know, look, did, did you know, let me tell you why. During World War II, there were German spies. Now, these German spies were very, very good. You couldn't tell a German necessarily from an American or an allied soldier. Why? Because, you know, they were European, white, like many of the soldiers on the, uh, on the allied side. The thing is, is that they were taught so well that they got rid of their accent when they spoke English. They would then get garner American military or, or, or allied uh, soldier uniforms, especially American, because then, uh, then they would drop the German accent when they were speaking English and, and have an American accent, and they fooled everybody. Now, the only reason that they were caught, caught up is because they didn't have the full knowledge of American culture because they didn't live here. So there were some things that, missed, that were missing that, that tripped them up, and that's how we learned about them. But see, now we have people that are living here. They can learn how to get rid of their accent. They can learn how to blend in. They know the American culture because they're here why they're called sleeper cells because to the rest of us they're kind of asleep we don't know who they are but when they pop up it is at the most inopportune uh, time it is usually going to be at the most unexpected time i mean you know we, we might expect you know every 9 11 september 11 to uh, you know to, for there to be some sort of attempt you know, and we might, you know, expect on a, on a July 4th or, or on a Memorial Day or a Veterans Day or some holiday. But what we don't expect is what happened in Texas. Now, you may, and a lot of people are saying, and I'll get into this too, because there's a bunch of BS fl- flying around about this, uh, of this woman uh, having a fatwa put on her head, and, and she never should have had this cartooning contest in the first place because it was so explosive. I- I'll get into that. The point is, is that you cannot, you cannot know every instance of when something is negative, bad, is going to happen. You just have to be prepared for when it does. Now, I got to tell you that there are a lot of people that that don't want you to be prepared because they they want you to believe that, oh, well, you know, we'll take care of you. You know, the government will take care. No, the government can't always do that. I don't know what part do people not get that the government can't always do that. They can't always protect people because they can't be there all the time. But knowing this, we need to be able to protect ourselves and be prepared for what might happen. Because, you know, they're telling us, even if they do not have 71 operatives. Now, I don't know why they would think that they would have a need to lie. They think they're going to scare us to death. Obviously, we've listened to them talk about having, you know, not just ISIS, but other terrorist groups talking about having uh, cells here in the United States. And we don't go and and run and hide from them. But here's an organization who we know is across our border in Mexico, who's had plenty of access uh, to get across the border undetected. So, you got to ask, are, are they really that far off? You know, look, maybe they don't have 71. But what if they just have three or four or five? Can, can, can three terrorists do damage? Two terrorists almost did some damage. Can three of them do damage? Yeah, they can do a hell of a lot of damage. Now, this warning, which was posted on a file sharing site, could not be verified, but was signed by Abu uh, Ibrahim al-Ameriki, 
Now, that name matches the moniker of a shadowy American known to have joined a terrorist group in Pakistan several years ago and has appeared in propaganda videos before. Now, the chilling threat named five of the states uh, where it is claimed that ISIS has terror cells in place. Out of the 71 trained soldiers, the site said, 23 have signed up for missions like Sunday. We are increasing num- uh, in number, read the wording. Of the 15 states, five will name, we will name uh, Virginia, Maryland, Illinois, and uh, California, and Michigan. Now, I, I don't, look, Michigan is, especially lower Michigan with Detroit and everything, that, that's already in bad shape. I don't know why they think they got to go after uh, uh, Michigan. Um, but they named Michigan. California, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm actually I'm surprised New York isn't on the list, but the, that's probably a, 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 a fait complete. That's, you know, New York is always on the list uh, to, be, to be attacked, especially New York City. Now, an intelligence source told Fox News uh, U.S. officials were assessing the threat, but does not believe it came from the ISIS leadership. It may come, have come from an opportunist, such as a low-level militant seeking to further capitalize on the Garland incident. Well, he can try to capitalize all he wants, uh, but he's making some waves now, isn't he? If he's a lower-level dude, he's definitely making some waves. And what, what's needed is people need to be able to protect themselves because of this guy. Because of... Just in case. You know, it, it's, it's not something that you, that you want to take lightly. Um, it, it, because every time we take something lightly, then we're reminded that we probably shouldn't have done that because then there's another attack somewhere. Now, sometimes these, these attacks succeed. Sometimes, most of the time they do not, but do, do they have to succeed all the time to make an impact? I mean, they can even fail 100% of the time, but the impact, the negative impact on people and how safe and secure that they feel is, is, a tr- is tremendous. It is tremendous. Now, you know, I tell you, if, they, if, if you want to walk around and be scared all day long, then the Islamists win. But at the same time, if you walk around perfect, you know, knowing perfectly well that you are safe and protected, either by outside forces or by your own hand, then you're not going to you know, live your life in fear and worry too much about what these idiots are saying. But you have to be in a position where you can be prepared to take care of yourself and not depend on some government lackey because you know, they might miss something and not be there in time. They can't be everywhere all the time. This isn't, uh, you know, it, there's, no, there's no, we don't have a crystal ball. Nobody has a crystal ball to determine when, where the next attack is going, to, is going to be attempted, by whom, and with what. And, and we can't sit around, you know, like we're playing a game of Clue. You know, Mr. Mustard, Colonel Mustard did it in the library with the candlestick. That's not going to happen. Now, they're claiming that there are 71 trained soldiers in the United States right now running around acting like Americans acting innocent like nothing is up nothing is happening and yet they are being told that at some point they will be asked to go and do what they were trained to do so the, the, the point, the question I have for you is, are you going to be ready if that person happens to be near you or in your neighborhood when they decide to pull the trigger? Because some people in your neighborhood are, are absolutely going to need you to help protect them. I'm just telling you the truth, folks. Don't doubt me. 
Don't doubt me at all. Hi, I'm George Foreman. Do you have an idea for a new product or invention? People ask me all the time, George, how do I get my idea in front of companies? How do I get a patent? What do I do next? I'll tell you like I'll tell them all. Call my friends at InventHelp. Call InventHelp today for free information. InventHelp can submit your invention to companies who are interested in receiving new ideas. Call InventHelp today. To get your free inventor's information, call 1-800-352-1609. That's 1-800-352-1609. If you want to work until you keel over, have less of everything in retirement, or give back more of your hard-earned money to the stock market again, then just ignore me. But if you'd like to protect the money you save, receive a steady, predictable retirement income, and enjoy financial security for as long as you live, then listen to this. You can download a free report that reveals the wealth-building secrets Wall Street and the banks don't want you to know. You'll learn how you can get guaranteed growth, safety, and real prosperity without risking your money in the Wall Street casino and how to get the money you need when you need it simply by asking for it. This is the best way to have a 100% secure retirement and know your money will last as long as you do. To learn more about this method and to get your free report, go to 52security.com. That's the number 52security.com. 52security.com. Go to 52security.com. Hurt or injured in a car accident? It can be hard to take the proper legal action after a car accident, but waiting can cost you more. The law requires car accident victims to assert claims promptly. You could lose out by simply waiting. Call 800-709-4667 right now to see what your claim could be worth when handled by a skilled attorney. With a lawyer fighting and speaking up for you, you could be entitled to a big cash award. Call 800-709-4667. That's 800-709-4667. Now it's fast and easy to connect with the legal help you need after your car accident. Call 800-709-4667. The call is free, but you need to act now before time runs out on your claim. You need a a lawyer to fight for you, protect you, and get you the compensation you need and deserve. Time's wasting. Call 800-709-4667. That's 800-709-4667. Call now. I considered suicide so I wouldn't put my family through all the pain. Many of our warriors are returning home from the battlefield only to face a new war as they struggle with devastated injuries. At Wounded Warrior Project, we understand. We're there to help. Even though you think you're broken, you're not. It's the physical and the emotional healing that Wounded Warrior Project provides. With a gift of just $19 a month, you can join Wounded Warrior Project. You'll help provide critically needed programs and services that rebuild lives. Beautiful. The ongoing needs of our wounded and their families will continue for many years to come. Now is the time to show your support. Call now or go online with your gift of just $19 a month and we'll send you this Wounded Warrior Project blanket. It made me feel that there's people out there that care about us. After this event, we can finally maybe start to heal as a family and move forward. We need your help. The families are hurting. For many of our wounded heroes, the greatest casualty is being forgotten. That's why your gift of just $19 a month is so important. Please call or go online right now. You shouldn't have to pay to talk to the people closest to you or the people who used to be. That's why Umbrella Wireless is proud to announce the new friends, family, and recent ex-girlfriend plan. Now you'll get unlimited calls to your best buddy, your mom, or Cindy once she realizes that you're seriously meant for each other and should stop screening your calls. Now the 30 minutes of agonizing silence where you're both afraid to hang up may drain your battery, but it won't drain your wallet. And you'll get unlimited calls just to check if she still cares enough to pick up with no extra charges. With a friend's family and recent ex-girlfriend plan, your phone will automatically answer calls from your ex because maybe she finally realizes that you're the only one for her and wants to get coffee sometime. Now, after lonely nights of looking at pictures of the road trip you took together when everything was great, your misspelled texts are absolutely free. The only thing you have to pay for is the booze. The friend's family and recent ex-girlfriend plan. Because she wants you back, she just doesn't know it yet. Raw 
Todd Eckel Show. 603-835-3224 is the number to call if you wish to join me and talk about anything on your mind, especially the, the ISIS stuff here on the Rod Eckel Show. That is a toll-free number. Welcome back to all of my listeners, to all my new listeners out there, as well as uh, you regulars out there. Uh, I, I uh, you know, I'm probably look, next week. There is, um, there's, there's going to be some people will notice a little bit of a change to the program, and it's a positive and a good change because it shows that we're constantly trying to improve here, uh, get better. Uh, so that you will continue to listen in and, uh, and, and depend on this program to, to give you good, hard-hitting information with some great commentary to back it up. Um, uh, that's my whole goal here. The, again, my, my general goal is, is um, it, to reach a point in my life that everybody doesn't necessarily agree with me, but they, they think logically. And thus, if they think logically, they'll naturally agree with me. Uh, I, I don't want to force anybody to, to agree with me. I just want people to think logically. Now, if we're both thinking logically, we're going to agree on the macro. We really are. I, that's, that's my whole goal, is to get everybody thinking logically. So if we can get everybody to think logically, then we can get rid of all these liberals. Liberals will stop being liberal once they turn on their brain and start thinking. Just saying. Uh, with this... Um, Attack in tech. Now, there's a a lot of people out there. And I'm surprised at where this is some of, where some of this stuff is coming from. About people talking about, well, you know, she shouldn't. Geller shouldn't have done that. She shouldn't have done it. You know, the, uh, and they're talking about place from places that you would not normally think uh, where this type of rhetoric would be coming from. There are so many people talking about. Well, there's. You know, there's a there's limits on freedom of speech, on free speech. Yeah, there's there is a natural limit where you can't lie about somebody else. You know, defame somebody with a lie. That's a natural law. Uh, you, you can't you can't uh, cause undue harm or pain. For instance, you can't shout in the middle of a crowded movie theater. Fire! Everybody, get out! Fire! When there is no fire. You can't do that. But to say that somebody cannot express their own beliefs about a particular religion, like, say, Islam, and say, in order, if they do that, then, you know, they should expect what happened in Texas. Well, if we're going to say that their certain speech is not free speech, then none, no speech is free speech. None. Anything that happens to be truthful is not free speech because it can be limited because somebody can say, well, you know, we know this is true about this topic, but you can't say it because it might cause somebody to bring a gun to a public arena and start shooting people. I mean, we can't do that. Either you have free speech or you don't. Yes, there are consequences that are attached to free freedom and free speech. Of course, there are consequences. If you do certain things, you should you should understand that there there can be certain kinds of um, repercussions. Now, if you're going to defame the Prophet Muhammad or Allah, you got to understand there there are most likely if they if they see it, hear about it, what have you. There is going to be certain kinds of repercussions. Now, if you know that going into it <clears throat> and you still decide to take the leap, then you have the right to do so and you should have the right to do so. We should not be determining our free speech on whether or not is it is going to lead to a terror attack or not. That's not for, that's allowing them the terrorists to win. Come on, folks, wake up here. If you are going to let the terrorists get away, you know, the the, the terrorists allow, uh, you allow the terrorists to tell us what we can and cannot talk about, what we can and cannot. I mean, that would be like the terrorists telling, you know, hey, hey, Fox News, you better not mention the name uh, Allah or Muhammad in your news stories or we're going to bomb your stations. 
And then Fox does talk about it. And then one of their stations gets bombed. And then everybody else comes out of the woodwork and says, well, you know, Fox should know better. They shouldn't do that because it's going to upset people. Well, no. But don't get me wrong. There are people on Fox News in the Fox channel um, that are kind of chastising this woman for doing having this uh, Mohammed photo contest or cartoon, whatever it is. I wasn't even, you know, I didn't even care. Look, do you know how many times that people have denigrated and put it in colloquial, modern colloquial terms, dissed my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? I mean, putting a crucifix in a jar of piss, having dung spread all over, you know, uh, 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 the Virgin Mary. Now, I'm not Catholic, but that's still G- Mary is still the mother of Jesus, the earthly mother of Jesus. I mean, there is tons of art that even hangs in some of our, our supposed very well-known, you know, and illustrious and prestigious art museums across the country that completely and totally denigrate Christianity and even denigrate Judaism. But for some reason, oh, no, 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 you can't denigrate, you cannot make fun of Islam because that'll just set them off. And, you know, they'll run around trying to kill people uh, for no reason other than you made them mad because you denigrated their religion. Hello? And we have all these people on the left who want to denigrate uh, 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 Christians for standing up for their Christian beliefs. But they're not running around shooting anybody. They're not running around beheading anybody. They're not running around hanging anybody. They're not running around trying to blow people up. And Christians are not running around recruiting other you know, new Christians to come in to wrap bombs around their bodies and to jump on buses and push the detonation button and blow themselves up along with a few other people. Christians don't do that. Christians aren't running around, you know, in, in the war zone in the Middle East, grabbing these people, gra- grabbing other uh, members of other religions, marching them out onto the water's edge somewhere and shooting them in the back of the head execution style or having a video of them while, they're, while they chop off 300 heads. Christians and Jews do not do that. But for whatever reason, we're supposed to placate and sit back and let Islam dictate what we can and cannot say. Is it, you might as well just say, if this woman can, in her organization cannot have a cartoon drawing contest of the Prophet Muhammad, you might as well just sit back and say that nobody, our news can't talk about him, our newspapers can't write articles about him, nobody can do anything and talk anything against Islam or Muhammad. Because that's, that's what you, basically what you're saying. Because if you say anything other than praise Allah, then uh, you're, 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 you're inviting violence. You know, I mean, uh, Franklin Graham is saying this woman shouldn't... Pro- Let me tell you something, Mr. Graham. If you are afraid that what this woman is doing should not be construed as free speech because, you know, it, it could incite Islamists to attack then you just might as well stop being a Christian because let me tell you something. They do not like you. You are an infidel and to them all, all infidels must either convert or die. Plain plain and simple. That's it. Your very existence hurts them. They don't have to know you. They don't have to live near you. They don't even have to live in the same country. Just know that your very existence hurts them. They cannot stand your very existence. They cannot stand that you breathe. So forget the fact that you might say something that might upset them. They're already upset that you're, that you're actually alive. I mean, why do you think they're walking, uh, they're capturing Christians and Coptic Christians left and right and executing them? Because their very existence is a travesty to them. It hurts them. You, they've got to eliminate you. So this whole no, the, the whole notion that that you know somebody is going to attack the prophet and, and denigrate the prophet to them you know as it, pff, people have de- people have denigrated God Himself, the Jude- Judeo Christian God Himself, and, and 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 we haven't gone on terrorist rampages to stop them. So why should we? 
bow down to this type of Sharia uh, legalization or law when that's not what this country's about. Now, if you're going to be in Saudi Arabia, then, you know, great. It's their country. They get to make their rules and their laws. And that's the other thing I don't, I don't understand with people. You know, they, they, you know liberals in this, in this country, they, wanna, they want to talk about some states, and when I mean states, countries, and how bad their, their, some of their, their, their human rights are, but they will not touch the human rights uh, uh, travesties in these Islamic-run nations. I mean, women are treated as second-class citizens. Women can be freely raped and, and sold and traded. Uh, women have no rights. They cannot be, in many Middle Eastern countries, cannot be educated. They cannot hold positions of governmental power. They cannot drive. They cannot own their own businesses. And in some of these states where they have full Sharia law, you know, a woman can't even, you know, go outside her house without having a male member of her family escorting her. Uh, and, and if the woman, you know, d- does something like, you know, her burqa falls off or t- she takes it off because she's hot or something or wipes her brow, uh, she can be stoned to death. But all of that is fine because that's just freedom of expression and freedom of religion. But you bring come here to the United States where we have it enshrined and protected by our Constitution that you have freedom of expression and freedom of speech. And you express that and they people want to denigrate you. Have we lost our collective freaking minds? Now, I am not saying I agree with what she did. I'm not saying I disagree with what she did. I am saying that she has the every right to expect to be able to do what she did and do it safely in this country. Again, if she was in another country and she did it, well, you know, whatever their laws are, that's what she has to go by. But she's in the USA. She's a U.S. citizen. And, and, and no other U.S. citizen should denigrate or condemn what she did for any reason. I'm, so, I'm just going to lay it out. None of you should. All of you out there that have, shame, shame, shame on you. Because that is completely un-American and goes totally against the U.S. Constitution that you say you love and want to protect. I want you to, th- I want you to back away from the computer or wherever you're listening to this and think about it. I don't care if you got to go sit in the corner with a dunce cap on your head, but you really need to think about it because I'm calling you out. Because where do you draw the line? Where do you draw the line? You cannot possibly, possibly tell me that in the United States of America, that somebody should worry about what, what they say that can be proven as the truth if it's going to upset somebody or not. And if they upset somebody, oh, then that person probably has every right to go, you know, uh, go out and shoot up the place. So what you're saying is because she had this, this Comic-Con for, uh, basically for, for Mohammed, that these two terrorists basically had the right to go out and shoot up the place. That's what you're saying. And don't tell me, oh, no, Rod, you're just taking it too far. You're going, no, I'm not. I want you to stop and think about it logically. Because that's exactly what you're saying. You're saying that this poor woman, she doesn't have a real right to do that. She doesn't have a right in this country to go out and talk about things that, you know, she doesn't like. Because it just might inflame somebody. Since when do we start paying attention or, or measuring the Constitution by whether or not we're going to upset someone? And that's just totally ludicrous. That is not the United States of America that I know. And then you're going to tell me, well, they have, you know, they're claiming that they have 71 operatives, uh, secret agents here in the United States who are ready in position to go go and throw out, throw down attacks in 15 states. 
Why? Why are, are, are they going to are they going to throw down an attack simply because somebody in one of these 15 states says something that upsets them? I mean, it, is it going to be you know a church preacher that's preaching you know the the full on full blown nothing but you know fire and brimstone gospel? Is that going to set off an attack? The problem is, Mr. Graham, is that we do not know what will set them off. You can say, well, you know, it's, it's well, yeah, it's like, it's like the, uh, well, the, 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 the Hebdo, Habdo, Gary Habdo, Hebdo, whatever French magazine. Uh, if you do something like that, you could say, well, yeah, that, that's going to set them off. If you have a cartoon and you, and, and, you know, comic books, you put Muhammad in the comic book, is that going to set him off? Yeah, that probably set him off. What happens if you just say something negative about Muhammad? What happens if you just mispronounce the prophet Muhammad's name on purpose or by accident? Is that going to set him off? So we can't even say the name? How about all these, you know, wonderful people running around here with the name Muhammad? Is that somehow going to, that's obviously going to offend someone. Is that going to give them reason to, 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 to pop off with a gun or an attack? Come on, Mr. Graham and all you naysayers out there. Tell me, what, what is the point or where is the point that we can say, well, you have freedom of speech, but beyond this, you don't. Where is that point? What is it that, that you seem to know is going to set them off? Now, th- should we expect that, if, th- should she have expected that in this country now I understood if she's in Europe she's in the United States of America with a, exercising her constantly our constitutionally protected inalienable right and you are going to tell us that she shouldn't exercise her rights in that way here in this country if that's the case then Islam is one we might as well just throw down our you know put down our Bibles uh, abandon our, our, our churches and synagogues and just bow to Allah. Because that's what you're telling us that we need to do in order to stop them from attacking. And indeed, that is the only thing that is going to stop them from, att- well, even then. Oh, look, they're attacking each other in the Middle East. So again, you know, you better think if you're going to, uh, uh, you know, go into Islam, if you're going to convert to Islam, you better convert to the right Islam. Because if you convert to the wrong one, you're no better than an infidel. You're worse than an infidel. And, you know, you need to die first. If you're, if you're the wrong, if you're of the wrong uh, a shade of Islam, then, you know, you're worse than the infidels. You need to die first. No mercy for you whatsoever. So you better figure out which is the right Islam and convert to that. Because the wrong one is still going to get you, is going to land you and, and, and you're going to still in hot water and you're going to be attacked. I know some people out there are saying, well, no, that's not, that can't be true. Really? Then why are they fighting each other, warring out there in the Middle East? Islam against Islam. Because they don't like each other because it's a different type of Islam. It's a different denomination. They do not accept a different denomination. And, and look, ISIS doesn't accept a different. Al-Qaeda doesn't accept a different Islam, uh, a denomination of Islam. You know, Iran doesn't. Hell, if they, if they didn't have so much oil to sell, Saudi Arabia wouldn't be accepting of, uh, you know, Iran's denomination of Islam. The whole point is, is that you're going to have to pick the right denomination. You know, you know, in this country, we have various denominations of Christianity. There's various denominations or sects of Judaism. You're free to pick any one of them. And the others are not going to come and attack you and try to kill you. You do it with Islam and you could die. Plain and simple. That's the truth. That's fact. It's happening now. 
Even as I speak, some Islamist in the Middle East is falling to a bullet or a bomb. But here, we're focused on, well, you know, she probably shouldn't draw a cartoon of the Prophet Muhammad. Because that, that could possibly tick off an, uh, you know, an Islamist radical. They're already ticked off. They don't need an excuse or a reason. They'll just use it, but they don't need one. Because they already have one. We're infidels. We all need to die, according to them. So this whole notion that we're going to placate them uh, uh, by not doing things that, that, that you know, denigrates their profit is a bunch of BS. Did you hear what I said, Mr. Franklin Graham? It's a bunch of BS. Now, now come on now. Don't make me actually say the words. The initials or, or the letters will just suffice. It's a bunch of BS. And for, and for those of you in Rush Limbaugh's Real Linda that don't know what BS really stands for, look it up or ask somebody who's not from Real Linda that you know on Facebook. They'll tell you. This whole notion that we can just, we can play nice. I, I don't, look, that, that's liberalism is sneaking in there. I, I don't... This whole notion that, that, oh, yeah, if you just play nice, if you be nice, if you, if you get out of their face, they're going to like you and leave you alone. No, it's a bunch of BS. Has not, their whole mission is to convert the entire world. How do you convert the world, the entire world, if you leave some of, some of the people in it alone? Oh, yeah, yeah. United States has backed out of the Middle East, you know, they got all their troops out, all their influence out, and, uh, you know, they're out of, they're out of uh, Western Europe, too, so we're not going to attack them anymore. No, uh, no, that is not the case. We're still going to be a target, and we're going to be a target because, you know, they view this country as being the great Satan, or Satan's great country. Uh, you know... Hey, we're we're of the devil, you know, to put it in water boy terms. Uh, Yeah, him Christian is nothing but the devil. Him Jews are nothing but the devil. Now, Bobby Boucher, don't you go out with none of them Christians or Jews now, because they the devil. Now, Bobby Boucher, you stay with the Islam, but you stay with the right Islam, you know, because the other Islam, Bobby Boucher, is the devil. No, think about it. Look, look, I'm not off the deep end. I'm not off the bend here. You just got to fully understand it logically speaking. If you're going to tell an American that an American on American soil under an American constitution, under the American flag, is not safe expressing their true, heartfelt, fact-filled opinions, then we don't have freedom of speech. And that fact-filled opinion could be in the form of, of, of words or art or cartoons or comics or a song or a movie or a video, whatever. But if they cannot even do that here because you fear an attack will come, well, frankly, I don't care from what side of the political aisle you're on. You're a total, full-blown Nothing, just like a liberal, nut job idiot. You are. Because if you think you can placate those people over there, and who bring and send people over here to do us harm and damage, if you think you can placate them by not talking about Muhammad in a negative light, or drawing his caricature, or what you think he might look like, You've got another thing coming because they will still attack. Don't doubt me. Daenerys Targaryen. She says she is the mother of dragons. But would you trust her with your kids? Her father was a maniac. She palled around with Dothraki terrorists. She asked the city of Karth for a government. 
then she lost three baby dragons after placing them in an unlocked wooden box. An unlocked wooden box. This Khaleesi wants to be queen of the seven kingdoms, but can she be trusted? Daenerys Targaryen. Wrong for dragons. Wrong for the realm. Paid for by the committee to protect dragons. We don't know anything about him. He was never really vetted. Is he really the true-born son of Robert Baratheon? All over the Seven Kingdoms, people are asking the same question. Who is the real King Joffrey? The people of Westeros are hurting. Winter is coming. Crop yields are falling. And the price of fuel is going up. The cost of peat moss is through the thatched roof. And this young and inexperienced king takes advice from a whoremongering imp and has launched an illegal war in the north. What is King Joffrey hiding? This is not our kind of family values. King Joffrey. What a bastard. What a bastard. Paid for by the Young Baratheons for freedom. Rob Stark. He's the biggest celebrity in the North. But his father was a traitor. He arrested his own mother. His bastard brother deserted the Night's Watch. And he couldn't defend his own castle. Worst of all, Rob Stark hasn't stopped the wildlings from invading our lands and taking our jobs. He even has an illegal alien for a nanny. And now he wants to be king in the North? King? Some people say he's really a wolf. Some people say he eats dead people. We can't wait until it's too late. Send a raven to Winterfell now and tell Rob Stark to go back home. Stop eating dead people and defend the damn wall. This ad paid for by Crossbows GPS. You shouldn't have to pay to talk to the people closest to you, or the people who used to be. That's why Umbrella Wireless is proud to announce the new friends, family, and recent ex-girlfriend plan. Now you'll get unlimited calls to your best buddy, your mom, or Cindy, once she realizes that you're seriously meant for each other and should stop screening your calls. Now the 30 minutes of agonizing silence where you're both afraid to hang up may drain your battery, but it won't drain your wallet. And you'll get unlimited calls just to check if she still cares enough to pick up with no extra charges. With a friend's family and recent ex-girlfriend plan, your phone will automatically answer calls from your ex because maybe she finally realizes that you're the only one for her and wants to get coffee sometime. Now, after lonely nights of looking at pictures of the road trip you took together when everything was great, your misspelled texts are absolutely free. The only thing you have to pay for is the booze. The friend's family and recent ex-girlfriend plan because she wants you back. She just doesn't know it yet. When you can't find anything to watch on cable, you get bored. When you get bored, you listen to radio cooking shows. When you listen to radio cooking shows, you invite a friend over for dinner. When you invite a friend over for dinner, you use twice as many beans. When you use twice as many beans, you expel deadly farts that kill your friend's dog. When you kill your friend's dog, your friend becomes unstable. When your friend becomes unstable, you're sued for everything you're worth. When you're sued for everything you're worth, you're thrown to the streets. When you're thrown to the streets, you devote your life to world domination. When you devote your life to world domination, you become an evil fascist overlord. When you become an evil fascist overlord, old friends plot their revenge. When old friends plot their revenge, you are shot in the back of the head. And when you're shot in the back of the head, you miss your jazzercise appointment. Don't miss your jazzercise appointment. Upgrade to Indirect TV. Go online or call 1 800 Direct TV. Mm -hmm. 
millions of Americans every day are shedding unwanted pounds by taking tested and proven ultra lipo stick. Carbohydrates are bad, bad. Our carbo fighting antioxidant is good, good. Just listen to these satisfied customers. My name is Gal, and I lost like 20 pounds on ultra lipo stick. My name is Jared, and I lost 46 pounds using ultra lipo stick. My name is Zach, and I actually gained weight. This stuff sucks. Ultra lipo stick is safe and easy to inject. Just three doses, four times a day, discreetly underneath your fingernail. Listen to this. I used ultra lipo stick and suffered from side effects like uncontrollable greasy discharge. Ultra lipo stick, it turned the armpits of all of my shirts orange. This stuff is crap. Try it today and see some real results. Ultra lipo stick, not available in stores. Results may vary. Zinc Media. Feel the power of knowledge. this over in the Middle East or in China or Russia. Oh, hell no. They, they cut you down and shoot, shut you down and shoot you down and all kinds of things. But here in the USA, not only do I have the right to produce this type, excuse me, this type of program, but iced tea makes, gives, makes me belch, by the way. Snapple. Love it. Uh, peach flavored iced tea from Snapple. Made from the best stuff on earth. There you go. Free, free ad spot for Snapple. But you know, if they didn't, if we didn't have the Constitution, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to do this. And you would not have the right to listen to something like this. So why all of a sudden we're, we're now having people from the right side of the political aisle start telling us that, you know, we should stop exercising our right to free speech in order to not make people angry. I know I piss people off. I know I piss people off. So it, it what is it my it's not my response. I'm not trying to incite any action or reaction from anybody. But is it my fault and my responsibility if somebody just decides to take take what I say out of context and then start shooting up a bar somewhere? Uh, no, I, I might say, you know, you know, bars are evil, bar, bars are terrible. Is it my responsibility if somebody decides to take that and, and, and go and shoot up some bars because, you know, I said bars are evil? Uh, it is not my responsibility. It is the person who actually shot up or tried to blow up the bar. It's their responsibility, their fault. It is not this woman's fault for having a, a cartoon contest or a comic book contest starring uh, the Prophet Muhammad. It's the person or people who ordered the hit on, on that event. That it's their fault. And it's the people who actually carried out the hit. It's their fault. It's not anybody else's fault who decides to hold the event. Are you kidding me? Well, why are we blaming people that should not be blamed? Well, good evening, my fellow Americans and freedom lovers all over the globe. It is I, your lovable host, Elrod, coming to you live from my bunkerized home studio uh, from somewhere in the great granite state of New Hampshire. Yeah, I should probably definitely put up some sandbags or something and re reinforce my bunkerization here in the bunkerized home studio after what I said tonight, huh? Uh, it is hump day, Wednesday, Wednesday, day, May the 6th in the year of our Lord, 2015. Um, yeah. And the number that you can call this evening is 603 
835-3224. That's 603-835-3224. That is a toll-free number, by the way. And uh, if you dial that number in, and you, well, I'll see. You know, you can call from you can call from your cell phone. You can call from your landline. You can call from um, your your uh, online telephone. You can call from Skype. You can call from Google. You can call from Timbuktu. I don't care. Just call if you want to call. You have something on your mind, you know. If you if you got a satellite, do the, we still have? Sa- remember, you know, I once thought. Speaking of satellite phones, that I once thought that satellite phones would be the death of cell phones. Now, the problem is, is that it, I, 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 when they first really came out, and that was like in the late nineties. You know, they were kind of large compared to cell phones. Um, but in, in the cost of them was rather expensive, but it was no different from cell phones in their early days. Now I would have thought with today's technology and the way things speed up that we would have gotten past that and, uh, we, we'd be more of sat, uh, satellite phones. We wouldn't need all these cell towers. Um, but for whatever, but for whatever reason, uh, although I, I think that, it, uh, with some of the. Uh, part of the problem was some of the uh, uh, satellite phone companies, they relied on, they still relied on cell towers for the uplink of the signal. Because uh, you, you can get you can get the phone call or a text message, I guess, from anywhere on the planet because, you know, the, it's satellite. It just beams it down. But the, 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 the handheld unit wasn't powerful enough to, to beam the signal back up to the satellite. So it had to go, it had to be routed through cell phone towers, I guess. And maybe that's why it didn't take off. They needed to really improve it. Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of what they keep saying about, you know, battery cars and stuff. We need new batteries that'll, that'll allow for a longer time in between charges. In other words, you can drive farther and drive faster. And, uh, and, then, and then we get, you know, like Elon Musk and Tesla that, that seems to be uh, stepping up to the challenge. Um, I, I'm not, a, I'm still, I'm not a huge fan of electric cars, but I do like those Tesla things. Those Tesla cars look pretty cool. Uh, they're kind of expensive, but n- n- no more expensive than their gas powered counterparts that they're competing with directly. Um, you know, the super sports car. Yeah, it's kind of expensive for an electric car. That's a, that's expensive vehicle. But if you're going to go with a supercar, uh, you're paying that price anyway. So, you know, and if you're buying a, uh, a, a European style luxury car, well, that's the equivalent of what Tesla has for the everyday family, I guess, you know, around the 30 or $40,000 range. And that's what you're paying for a gas car. So I think the pricing is probably pretty competitive, but you, know, you, you got I know here in New Hampshire, if you're on uh, um, Route 93, uh, Interstate 93, heading through uh, past Manchester into what we call the uh, the Hooksit Rest Stop on the northbound and southbound side. There, there's two rest stops at at, at the same location, <coughs> and they have. <coughs> Excuse me. They have um, a number of Tesla recharging stations. Now, I don't know how many Tesla cars are around here, but I think that's pretty cool. I really do. And yeah, look, this is it's the private sector trying to make something happen, trying to set up an in- see one of the reasons why we can't we're not getting very far with electric vehicles. Uh, well, there's two reasons. One, because Many of the electric vehicles that are, are, are hybrid vehicles that are, that are on the market actually kind of suck for what we want, want them to do. Or two, there isn't enough of an infrastructure. I mean, you, you, can't, you, know, you can't charge a thing everywhere and anywhere you want like a gas car. You just pull in and, and, and refuel. You can't do that with these hybrids. I mean, you, you need electricity from somewhere. And a lot of places just don't have the don't have the stations for uh, these hybrid or electric cars. So it's pretty cool that there's one on the highway. It now, uh, frankly, it's the only Tesla recharging station in this state that I know of, and I only I only know of of, of those two on the northbound and southbound sides. 
simply because I passed by them. Uh, and I saw them with my with mine own eyes. Uh, I didn't go looking for them because I don't have a need to. Maybe I should just look look them up, but um, I, don't, I didn't have a need to. Um, but it, it, it well, I suppose I could look it up now. If the people really want to know, I suppose I could look them up now. Um, you know, sa- satellite phones. If you're interested in, sa- I'll put some information up on the on RodEchoes.net about satellite phones. But the phones are are are, are still rather, you know, they're they're kind of pricey. Uh, they're still kind of large. They're a little bit bigger than 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 most cell phones nowadays, and and, and they don't have all the have all the, the 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 features. Most of them don't have all the features of a, of today's smart cell phones. Uh, although there looks like there is one for seven hundred and fifty dollars here. Um, it looks like a smartphone. Oh, it's a satellite sleeve for an iPhone 5, an iPhone 5S. So there you go. All you Apple fanatics, you can actually turn your iPhone into a satellite phone by purchasing the sleeve for $750, which shouldn't be a problem for you because you probably doled out four or five or $600 for the iPhone anyway. Um, uh, but there you go. In, in, in one of the satellite companies, I guess there's two. There's Iridium, which is still out there, and Blue Cosmos. Or Blue Cosmo. I, don't, I, don't, I know of Iridium. I do not know of Blue Cosmo. But I, I did. I thought that they would be able to take, take off by now. Uh, they, they've been around for over a decade now as far as being out there. But maybe they're maybe cuz maybe they're just taking the cell phone route cuz cell phones were were out back in in the 70s as mobile phones you know you had the car phone and you and you had to have a service you had the car phone in your car and your cert, you, whenever you picked up the phone you you, you got a, an operator or something or you know and they made the calls for you and patched it through uh, so basically it was kind of like a radio on on the uh, on your car phone and then we went to not cell phones, but mobile phones. Again, again, I, they were pretty much based on radio frequencies. Um, and then we finally started to get cell phones, but you know, in, in the '90s, but uh, late '80s, early '90s. But again, there were so few. Only in major cities could you possibly use a cell phone. Uh, the, the time, uh, the amount of time. Well, you know, you spent dollars per minute um, instead of you know fra- fractions of a cent today. Uh, they were really expensive to have, and only you know really successful business people had them. Um, and people, people that did have the cell, they never used them unless for an emergency. And they always had, they always coupled their cell phone with uh, with the, something called a pager. I'm sure many kids today do not know what a pager is, but they were all the rage in the '90s, uh, early and mid '90s. A pager was it, uh, but. And they were coming out with different kinds of pagers and making them, you know, smaller, able to do more, more fantastic things, uh, much like uh, 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 cell phones. I mean, it got to the point where you could actually uh, call a, 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 a person's pager number, dictate a short message, and that message would end up on that person's pager as a text message. Um, so yeah, that was early texting back then, but you had to call their number in order to to do that. Uh, But anyway, I digress. Uh, Just some informative stuff out there for you about, and again, uh, pagers died because cell phones kicked it up a notch and they, and, and started acting like pagers themselves. You didn't, and they became really cheap. So you didn't need a, a, a pager and a cell phone. Yeah, just like with land, this is why all the all these uh, you know uh, cable companies and and telephone companies are, are trying to force you into bundles because a lot of people have dumped their landline phone. I me I haven't had a when was the la- I don't remember uh, I haven't had a landline phone since probably around two thousand three two thousand four. No landline phone. Uh, other than, than than business, but you know, for personal use, I haven't had a a, a landline phone since two thousand three or two thousand four. I there was no need. Cell phones became that 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 reliable and that inexpensive that it was just 
there was I would never use the landline phone. So um, there you have it. Now you know my, my parents still have a landline and they have cell phones and and uh, all that kind of stuff. And and is they're they're kind of old fashioned. They they don't really use their cell phones. You still have to contact them really by their landline. That's what, you know, look, we live in this, we live in the, in a great country that allows people to choose like that. You know, they have the freedom to choose. They have, they have the freedom to be and express who, who they are without needing to worry about if somebody is going to retaliate for that, for that, uh, for that thought or belief that they have. That, that's the way it's supposed to be here. Shouldn't have to worry about, uh, you know, being retaliated against for because of your beliefs or your thoughts. It's just, that's, that's a third world, world banana republic. Speaking of republic, Republicans passed first regular order congressional budget since 2009. Uh, does any, can any, what year are we in now? 2015? And here it is, May, and they've got it. They've they've already passed one. Republicans promised to restore order to a dysfunctional Congress in the midterm elections. Yesterday, they delivered on that campaign promise, passing the first regular order. In other words, not a, the first real and regular full budget since two thousand and nine. And it didn't come easy. The fifty-one to forty-eight vote capped weeks of work by Republican leaders in the House and Senate who shepherded the blueprint through a messy debate over defense spending that at times threatened to split their conferences. Now, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell uh, had ripped Democrats for years over their failure to pass a budget and said Tuesday, uh, Tuesday's vote shows his GOP majority is getting the Senate working again. No budget will ever be perfect, but this is a budget that, it, that sensibly addresses the concerns of many different members. He said it reflects honest compromise from many different members with many different priorities. And he said that on the Senate floor. Now, the budget resolution does not carry the force of law, but structures the broad uh, limits of spending for appropriations Congress, Congress will pass later. Now, President Obama already has threatened to veto two of the 12 that Congress will produce and likely will veto at least some of the dozen in order to flex his own muscle in the budget process. Now, the, the Hill takes a pessimistic view of this tension, warning uh, Republicans that they didn't do so well in the last shutdown standoff. Look, pass the budget. Here's what you do. I, di- I mean, I'm not elected, and I know what you do. I, I, I'm not an elected official, and I know what you, what you should do. I know. Here's what you do. Let me give you some, you know, free, practical, logical advice. Now that you have passed a budget, now that you have said, okay, we have compromised on something that the majority of Congress agrees upon. Great. Send it up to the president. President says, well, I'm going to veto it. Fine. Then you get out there and you tell the American public and you force the lamestream media to listen to you. And you shout it from the rooftops, the mountaintops, the valleys, everywhere. And you, you send out every single congressional member that voted for the budget. You send them out in the road talking about it, talking about it at the same mantra, the same theme. We passed the first budget since 2009. It is a highly worked budget that was a compromise between a lot of people. But we passed it. Like the law says that we're supposed to have a budget, we got one now. We passed it. 51 people voted in favor of it. This is what the people want. And the president is the one who vetoed it. The president is the one who's shutting down the government. The president is responsible. Him and his fellow radical Democrats. And you keep pounding it. You keep pounding it because you bring it up every time they say, well, you know, uh, you know, the, 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 this isn't a good budget. Well, yeah, it is because it's a compromise that the majority of the Senate agreed upon. Now, no, there's no such thing as a perfect budget, but this, you got to start somewhere. And this is the one, this is the somewhere that the majority of people in the Senate agreed upon. 
Plain and simple. You just turn it on the president and the Democrats like you're supposed to. Because if they're going to come out and say, well, you know, this is not, not enough spending here, not enough spending there, you know, not enough raised taxes here. And you just say, you know what? We've already been through that, Mr. President. We've been through all those arguments. And this is what we have come up with that, the, that we believe the American people will like. They're not going to like all this extra taxation and extra spending. We're already in over $18 trillion in debt. So if the Republicans have a budget, finally... Shout it from the rooftops, the mountaintops, the valleys below. It doesn't matter where they're shouting it as long as they shout it. And turn the blame where it belongs back on the extremist liberal Democrats and the president. Because the president, after all, is the one who's vetoing it. If he does. So this whole, you know, Republicans are going to be blamed for their shutdown. Ah, Don't even follow it. You, you make your own um, uh, news, if you will. You know, you be the one to, uh, to talk or, or to frame the narrative. Don't, if you're going to sit back and let those knuckleheads uh, that, we call, that we like to call the, you know, the Democrats uh, frame the narrative, yeah, you're going to lose every time. You're going to lose every time. So what you have to do is you have to frame the narrative. And you have to jump out there in front to frame the narrative. You have to be the first talking about, about this in order to frame the narrative. You've, you've got it. You've got it right now. Everybody's starting to pay. Hey, look, this is the first budget that was regular budget that was passed since 2009. You've got it right now, Mr. McConnell. Run with it. Run You know, run, McConnell, run. Run with it. What is this wimpy mamby pamby? Oh, no, we're going to get blamed if if it shuts down. We can't, you know, we could could send it up there, but if the president doesn't sign it, we're screwed. Oh, they're going to blame us for the shutdown. No, that's that's only going to happen if you do like the last time you let the lamestream media and the left frame the narrative. If you jump out in front right now and frame that narrative, there's no way that they're going to be able to get away with it. Plain and simple. Oh, yeah, we got 51 members of Congress uh, uh, of, of the Senate who approved this. This is just strictly a GOP bill. No, we worked really hard on this one. You know, we compromised and, and probably in places that we shouldn't have compromised. But we did because we know that we needed to pass a budget. We need to move forward. This is terrible because there's not enough spending. We're not, we're not getting the $20 trillion in debt fast enough. Oh, just if you if you let somebody else frame the narrative, you're always going to be on the defense, Senator McConnell. Yeah, got you're gonna have to frame the narrative. You're gonna have to frame the story. You're gonna have to set the pace because if you let it get set on you, yeah, you're screwed. But if you set the pace. And you, and you put that pace out there that is too fast for many of the, the left wing to keep up, you're going to win. You're going to win in, in, in votes. You're going to win with the people supporting you. You're just going to win, plain and simple. But if you sit back and let somebody else frame the narrative, yeah, yeah, you're going to lose it. You're going to lose the argument, and then you're going to get blamed and then you're going to try to say, well, it's not our fault, but you don't own the narrative, so you can't really say that it's not your fault uh, because why? Because you don't own the narrative. I, I don't know how else to tell you, but it's you know, pretty plain and simple there. If you don't own the narrative, you don't own Jack, Jack. So you got to get it. Um, now, they, they went on to say that... Uh, Now, this could leave Congress facing a new government shutdown fight in September with a deadline of October 1st for passing some kind of legislation to keep uh, government funded. And I say, don't don't keep adding on these ad hoc things uh, just to just to try to keep the government running. Let the government shut down. And it's only going to be the the non-essential stuff anyway, which is a very small part of our government now. Ooh, Uh, just go ahead. Let them shut it down. 
And, and, and then frame the narrative. If you start framing it now and start shouting it out from the mountaintops that it's not your fault because you have the budget. It's just the Democrats won't play ball this time. And, and who do we always say is at fault? Republicans? Not this time. Hi, I'm George Foreman. Do you have an idea for a new product or invention? People ask me all the time, George, how do I get my idea in front of companies? How do I get a patent? What do I do next? I'll tell you like I'll tell them all. Call my friends at InventHelp. Call InventHelp today for free information. InventHelp can submit your invention to companies who are interested in receiving new ideas. Call InventHelp today. To get your free inventor's information, call 1-800-352-1609. That's 1-800-352-1609. If you want to work until you keel over, have less of everything in retirement, or give back more of your hard-earned money to the stock market again, then just ignore me. But if you'd like to protect the money you save, receive a steady, predictable retirement income, and enjoy financial security for as long as you live, then listen to this. You can download a free report that reveals the wealth-building secrets Wall Street and the banks don't want you to know. You'll learn how you can get guaranteed growth, safety, and and real prosperity without risking your money in the Wall Street casino, and how to get the money you need when you need it, simply by asking for it. This is the best way to have a 100% secure retirement and know your money will last as long as you do. To learn more about this method and to get your free report, go to 52security.com. That's the number 52security.com. 52security.com. Go to 52security.com. Hurt or injured in a car accident? It can be hard to take the proper legal action after a car accident, but waiting can cost you more. The law requires car accident victims to assert claims promptly. You could lose out by simply waiting. Call 800-709-4667 right now to see what your claim could be worth when handled by a skilled attorney. With a lawyer fighting and speaking up for you, you could be entitled to a big cash award. Call 800-709-4667. That's 800-709-4667. Now it's fast and easy to connect with the legal help you need after your car accident. Call 800-709-4667. The call is free, but you need to act now before time runs out on your claim. You need a lawyer to fight for you, protect you, and get you the compensation you need and deserve. Time's wasting. Call 800-709-4667. That's 800-709-4667. Call now. I considered suicide so I wouldn't put my family through all the pain. Many of our warriors are returning home from the battlefield only to face a new war as they struggle with devastated injuries. At Wounded Warrior Project, we understand. We're there to help. Even though you think you're broken, you're not. It's the physical and the emotional healing that Wounded Warrior Project provides. With a gift of just $19 a month, you can join Wounded Warrior Project. You'll help provide critically needed programs and services that rebuild lives. Beautiful! The ongoing needs of our wounded and their families will continue for many years to come. Now is the time to show your support. Call now or go online with your gift of just $19 a month and we'll send you this Wounded Warrior Project blanket. It made me feel that there's people out there that care about us. After this event, we can finally maybe start to heal as a family and move forward. We need your help. The families are hurting. For many of our wounded heroes, the greatest casualty is being forgotten. That's why your gift of just $19 a month is so important. Please call or go online right now. You shouldn't have to pay to talk to the people closest to you, or the people who used to be. That's why Umbrella Wireless is proud to announce the new friends, family, and recent ex-girlfriend plan. Now you'll get unlimited calls to your best buddy, your mom, or Cindy, once she realizes that you're seriously meant for each other and should stop screening your calls. Now the 30 minutes of agonizing silence where you're both afraid to hang up may drain your battery, but it won't drain your wallet. And you'll get unlimited calls just to check if she still cares enough to pick up with no extra charges. With a friend's family and recent ex-girlfriend plan, your phone will automatically answer calls from your ex because maybe she finally realizes that you're the only one for her and wants to get coffee sometime. Now, after lonely nights of looking at pictures of the road trip you took together when everything was great, your misspelled texts are absolutely free. 
The only thing you have to pay for is the booze. The friends, family, and Reese next girlfriend plan. Because she wants you back. She just doesn't know it yet. there again talking probably she probably shouldn't be talking she's saying i'll give legal status to any illegal immigrant who wants it so long as they bring a child with them so in other words you know she'll give grant illegal legal status just bring a future democrat voter with you um you know in order to help keep the democrat party in in power for another generation this is a story from hotair.com. Um, now, they're calling her Con Carroll. I don't, I don't know what that is. I missed that one. Uh, that's Con Carroll's formulation of what she said yesterday, um, which reads like it must be an exaggeration for effect. It really isn't. Obama, Obama's mega amnesty last November gave legal status to illegals who are parents of U.S. citizens. Now, Hillary's now promising to expand that by giving legal status to parents of dreamers. You know, the DREAM Act. Who are themselves illegal immigrants. If kids brought here, um, if kids brought here, illegally by their parents qualify for legalization under Obama's DACA DACA amnesty and the parents of those kids qualify for legalization under President Hillary's amnesty, then presumably any foreign citizen with a kid has a golden ticket to stay so long as they can make it across the border with their child. And uh, since Hillary's also strongly in favor of a, of a path to citizenship for illegals who are already here, her trump card next year in uh, year in out pandering the GOP with Latino voters. Um, it's also presumably true that a mom and a kid who've made it across will eventually become Democratic voters in due time. Now, make some wonder how the next Democratic presidential nominee in 2020 or 2024 will try to out-pander Obama and Clinton. The only move left is to offer legal status to all adult illegals, whether or not they have a kid or not. Open borders, just like those hysterical anti-amnesty nuts on the, on the right, always have feared. Yeah, I... Well... Um, are you surprised by this? I'm not surprised by this. Uh, is anybody surprised by this? Why would you be surprised that Hillary would want to give, you know, even go a step further than Obama in, in ensuring that, you know, a certain amount of illegals get to stay here and become legal, and then once they become legal, they can now they're on the path to citizenship and becoming legal voters. You know, it, it, it's amazing. Democrats will do just about any. I have found, I have found over my relatively short life, that Democrats will do just about anything to win and to get their agenda passed. Now, you know, some people say, well, will say that this, you know, if they're if you know, these people become legal citizens, Rod, then that, how is that cheating? Well, it's cheating because they broke the law to get here and the Democrats want to allow them to break the law. And not only that, they want to reward them for breaking the law and thus ensuring that, you know, they get their vote. So by hook or by crook, uh, Democrats are, will try anything. They will do anything they will say anything. 
They will be anything in order to keep power. Plain and simple. I don't look, don't doubt me. Don't this is their plan all along. This is their plan. Uh, you know, they're wow. I'm getting a little warm in here because I'm starting to get a little heated under the collar. But uh, I thought it was just my blood pressure rising because of Hillary. Hillary lately gets me all steamed up. But that's not the case. It's actually warm here in New England again. Well, we had high 70s for a temperature uh, outside up here in uh, central New Hampshire. And, and it really hasn't cooled off all that much. Now, like last night, it cooled off quite a bit. And it was rather comfortable, comfy, if you will. Uh, for the rest of the week, it's supposed to be uh, possibly hitting in, in, you know, by Sunday, we'll get another more 80s weather. I hope this isn't going to be our summer. Please, Mother Nature, be kind. And let this just be a precursor of the summer. The spring is just telling us what we have to look forward to uh, in the summer and not that this is going to be summer. So enjoy it while it lasts. Um I, I would rather have it go back to being normal temperatures in the 50s and 60s and, and for May if it means getting June, July, and August back to normal and having warm summer temperatures. But, you know, if you, if you, want, to be, if you want to be in the 70s and 80s throughout May and then continue that throughout June, July, and August, I'm not going to argue. I'm not going to complain. Absolutely not. It was, it was just another beautiful day out there today. Even though we have some people out there who want to try to ruin beautiful days with their stupidity as far as the illegal is concerned. Look, there's a reason why they're called illegal. It's because they cross the border illegally, breaking our laws. And pretty much, they, you know, they might be breaking um, um, Mexican law. I don't, I, I'm not an expert in, on, on the matter of, of Mexico immigration laws, but they could be breaking Mexican laws. But do you think Mexico is going to stop them? No, I didn't think so. Mexico wants them to come, come on over. You know, the government has already, the Mexican government has said so numerous times. Uh, yeah, speaking of Mexico, let's jump the, uh, the small pond a little bit over to uh, Cuba. Cuba, U.S. approves a ferry service between Cuba and Florida. Now, President Obama shook hands with a Cuban President Raul Castro at April Summit of the Americas, a sign of thawing relations while Raul Castro pretty much chastised. You know, look, I'm so, I'm, I, I, if, if I'm, <laughs> this is why I'm not the President of the United States, because I'm down there at the, um, at, at, at the Summit of the Americas. And Raul Castro came up to me to try to shake my hand, so to show a, a sign of, th- you know, th- thawing of our tepid relations. I backhand the, the, that eighty-year-old idiot across his face, and I wouldn't feel bad about it either. Well, you know, you know, we start. Look, we need to. I. This is why. You know, if I if you go by this. Now, just follow me for a second while I digress here, folks. This may be a little bit funny, a a little bit, but at the same time, it's not. You know, we need to have another young president. And the reason is, is that young president needs to be fit as hell. He needs to be able to physically kick the butt of any other world leader out there. So that when he's standing next to them, if they get out of line, he can smack them. Uh, You know what? We need a president that knows mixed martial arts. He needs to be an MMA trained kind of guy. I'm, t- I'm telling you, th- th- there's, a, there's, a posit- there's positivity to this because they're going to be disciplined for one. They're going to be in shape for two. They're not going to take any crap for three. They really aren't. Uh, you, you're going to tell me that if any of those people who are MMA champions or MMA, MMA trained, if they decided to enter politics and became the president, that you think that they'd be a wimpy, mamby, pamby, wishy-washy, liberal, loving liberal like uh, Obama. Oh, hell no. They'd be ready to be out there and kick some ass. Oh, did I just say that? Yes, I did. Well, they can say that on radio. I hear them say it on FM radio all the time, so I can say it. So, yeah, they're going to be ready to kick some ass. 
And it wouldn't be, it could bring in a new era of world leadership. You know, all of you old guys who, who screwed up the planet to begin with, we're going to kick your butt physically. So you better start electing younger people who didn't have the chance to screw everything up, who, who are, who are going to be the ones that have to fix everything. No, I know some people are saying, Rod, are you advocating violence among our world leaders? Well, yeah, because it's better than actually sending a bunch of tanks and people into war to kill each other. Why not just, you know, just have a, have a, have a boxing match? Uh, you know, well, isn't Mayweather, is it Mayweather? I don't know. Who's fighting Romney? Um, I, 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 I forget. Somebody's going to be boxing. I don't, I don't get that by the way. Romney's never been a, uh, Romney was never a boxer, right? I, but Hey, this guy, you know, he's an older guy. He, he's stepping in the ring. Now this is what we should probably do with world leader. You know what? You think you're such a badass, Mr. Raul Castro stepping in the ring. How about we backhand you a couple of times? Knock you out, put you out of your misery. Uh, and then we can, you know, do the same with your brother. And then we can, uh, you know, free the people of Cuba. They don't have to worry about you. Uh, I know, I, that's probably going to get me a knock on my door by people in dark suits and dark sunglasses. But, hey, look, I'm not, I'm saying that we need to have a president that's a kick-ass kind of guy who can go on there and go out there and kick some butt. Himself, physically. And, and, you know, look, you know, he should come back. You know, maybe, he'll, maybe he'll get a black eye. I don't know. I mean, uh, think about it. Can you imagine if Rubio is that guy? Now, I, I'm not endorsing anyone. But let's just imagine here. Rubio, you know, he takes, he, he, he takes his start. He starts training in MMA. Mixed martial arts or... or you know, uh, Grav Maga or some other, you know, brutal martial art that toughens the body and the mind and the spirit while training the body at the same time. And, you know, by the time he gets elected president, he's like a, you know, whatever the black belt is of, of, of that particular martial art. But it's something that he could pick up fast and practice and he practices and practices and every in between every speech he's practicing, you know, he's doing the P90X, the CrossFit, everything. He's in optimal shape he gets in the white house first of all if you're talking rubio now a lot of ladies think that marco rubio is a good looking guy and if he packed on some muscle and if he looked good in a short sleeve shirt or or you know well i i I don't think we have presidents that like to run around without any shirt but let's just say that you know he took off his shirt because there's pictures of him working out if this guy had had a body that had a six pack and an eight pack and you know some pecs and all that kind of stuff and he was in shape, and he knew martial arts, and he was a president, oh, man, he'd have it made. And if he went around the world and just started kicking the tail out of these stupid international leaders, and if he went up to the, to the United Nations and started beating some, you know, UN butt firsthand, no, oh, we might forgive that if he comes back with a black eye or two or a broken nose because he'd be beating some heads. Now, could you imagine if you had to... Now, there's a leader that you can... Reach, oh, no, sure, of course, you're going to have the liberals out there say, saying, oh, you, violence is not the answer. Well, you know, all these other people are, are... You know, all these other leaders, they're using violence. Using violence against their own people. And they sure as hell would love to use violence against the United, against the United States. You know, And they would if they did not fear our military that's why people do not you know other than terrorists you know countries don't try to attack our interests because they're afraid of our military response and those people who are not afraid of our military response usually uh, seem to come from uh, countries that either that that could be our military equal or superior um and so therefore they have no need to be afraid of us china for instance um, you know, 1.3 billion people, world's largest air force. Yeah. You know, sure, sure. You may shoot down five of our jets for every one of yours, but you know, 
uh, we're sending six jets at a time. <laughs> so uh, one of them's going to get through. One out of six is going to get through. And that's all we need. Just one out of six. But it would be a different world as far as politics are concerned if our leaders actually started bruising it up in a ring. I, it would definitely be a different kind of world if that, if that were the case. But anyway, it, it, just, just a dream. Just dreaming out loud. U.S. approves ferry service between Cuba and Florida. Now, passenger ferries could be set to run between Florida and Cuba for the first time in more than 50 years after the U.S. government approved new services. So, does that mean that Alien Gonzalez's relatives don't have to risk their lives anymore? They can just... Is Raul Castro going to allow uh, everyday Cubans to get on the ferry and come to the U.S. of A? Where they, when they get here... And, uh, you know, the, what, what, what if the uh, uh, wet to, sh- what is that called? The, sh- uh, the, the dry land asylum thing. If they can get to the shore out of the water on their own, then they can get asylum. But if we stop them in the water, then they go back. That's going to be, that's, that's kind of dumb actually, but Okay. So, but Washington announced uh, the restoration of diplomatic ties in December last year. Now, the U.S. government has now lifted the ban, and a number of ferry companies say they have been given licenses. Now, just if you got you know ninety miles away, I mean, it's just a you know. The ferry ride is going to be just a few hours long. Uh, well, I don't think there's are there. Sh- I don't think there are ferry ships that can do like fifty or sixty, the equivalent of fifty or sixty miles an hour on the open water. But uh, so it'll be a few hours, you know, th- maybe three or four hour ferry trip. But will will they allow those people in Cuba um, to come to the United States? I, I'm saying no, that it's really going to be a one-way type of uh, deal. It's going to be, you know, um, Americans, it's going to be non-Cubans who get to ride this ferry. Because I don't, I, don't, I don't think that uh, real, you know, uh, expatriated uh, Cubans will be willing to go back to Cuba um, if they feel that Raul Castro will come after them if they if they step foot on to Cuban shores. And I'm sure that's probably what they're uh, what he's thinking about, what he's hoping will happen. Uh, people liberals have gone off the deep end now. Uh, I, this was talked about yesterday. Uh, I didn't I didn't have time to really bring it up and go into depth. And unfortunately we're running out of time today, but I'm still going to bring it up anyway. Parents reading to kids, to their kids, parents reading to the parents. Uh, listen to what I'm saying. Parents and grandparents reading to their kids and grandkids have been blasted as unfair. 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 A leftist professor makes astonishing a claim. And don't think that this isn't going to start spreading around now. Yeah, this is, uh, this is from WND.com. And it, it, when I heard it, I'm like, this, this really can't, even a liberal really can't believe this. But yeah, this is, what, this is what these people are. Now, does reading to your children somehow give them an unfair advantage over less fortunate children? Now, less fortunate children in this particular case is parents who don't read or can't read to, their, to them. That, that that's less fortunate and doesn't matter doesn't matter how wealthy you are you're less if you have a kid who isn't read to at night it's less fortunate now this may get you to start reading to your child or grandchild but a british philosopher is making the claim and it's causing ripple rays across the globe i can't even believe we're giving this guy credence but because he's a lefty and that other lefties will take this to heart and start trying to implement policy to make things more fair. 
Now, it raises the question, should parents snuggling up for one last story before lights out be even a little concerned about the advantages they might be conferring? Now, why would you be concerned about in- inferring some sort of advantage to your child if you're reading to them? They like you to read to them. You like reading to them. And if it gives them advantage later, you know, later on in their academic career, so be it. Every parent wants that wants their kid to have, uh, you know, the, have an advantage. Now, I don't think parents reading uh, reading their children bedtime stories should constantly have uh, in their minds the way that they are unfairly disadvantaging other people's children. But I think they should have they should have that thought occasionally. It said British academic Adam Swift. So let me get this straight. While you're reading to little Johnny and Susie, you're supposed to think on occasion that you're giving little Johnny and little Susie an unfair advantage over Kevin and Stacy down the street whose mom and dad don't read to them. Uh, really? I, who, who is gonna, I mean, who is going to think, where do they come up with these people? Where do these people actually come from? I, I, they must come from outer space, literally. Be, they've got, I'm sorry, somebody around is, is putting something in the water or they're brainwashing these people and they're, and they're uh, you know, in, in some underground cave somewhere and then, and then releasing, releasing them, you know, upon the rest of us at some point. Because this is absolutely some of the most inane idiocy I have ever heard of. Now it's going to be bad if you are giving your child an unfair advantage simply by reading to them bedtime stories. You know, because you care about your child and the person and the parent down the street, maybe they can't read them bedtime stories because they have a third grade education and they never learned how to read. So they can't read to their kid, you know, bedtime story. So we're supposed to say, oh, that's just terrible. That's sad. That's awful. That's mean. That's cruel. That's unfair. It's unfair that you can read and it's unfair that they, that the, uh, uh, the other kids can't read. I mean, who comes up with this stuff? And, you know, well, Look, folks, this is this is for real. They like to they like to really get out there and try to um, uh, mess with people's minds. And evidence shows that the difference between those who get bedtime stories and those who don't, the difference in their life chances, uh, is bigger than the difference between those who get elite private schooling and those who don't. So, in other words, if you're reading to your kid at night a bedtime story you're giving them an even greater advantage than if you send them to an elite private school. And that's just unfair. That's unfair to little Johnny and, uh, you know, Kevin and Stacy who can't be read to at night. I, I look folks, I'm not making this stuff up. I, I sometimes I really wish I was, but you can't make this. Th- these people are just totally not so wacko. Uh, look, they just need to be defeated and liberalism needs to be shuffled off to the annals of history, never to return or see the light a day of again. Well, I'm Rod Eccles, folks, and uh, I am out of time for the night, but we'll be back here tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel. Again, I'm Rod Eccles. I'm out.